Yo! Things I wish I knew before switching to Linux from Windows. First, let me explain what is happening in the background, which is I'm installing a Linux virtual machine within Windows. More specifically, I'm installing VirtualBox, but this is the point. If you are considering installing Linux for the first time, there's a significant risk of accidentally erasing your entire system, particularly the C disk, which houses your operating systems like Windows or Linux. I don't mention this to discourage you. You can follow step-by-step -step guides and avoid making mistakes. However, it's always better to be cautious and prevent issues rather than dealing with them later. That's why I recommend starting by installing and experimenting with a virtual machine or with Linux via a virtual machine. And virtual machines may sound complex, but they are not. While there are more advanced tools like QEMU, which is quick emulation, I think, which require a deeper understanding, there is a user-friendly option called VM VirtualBox. And well, in the background, you can observe the quick installation of VirtualBox in my machine, more specifically in my Windows partition. But if you like a more detailed tutorial on how to set it up, you can find videos on YouTube, or I'll create some videos in the future that provide a more comprehensive guide on the setup process and most important concepts to be aware of. In summary, start by installing Linux through VirtualBox and experiment with it. Try performing real life work within the Linux machine. And if you are satisfied, I would strongly recommend installing it on your actual computer. Rather than obsessing over the best Linux distribution, focus on a critical element, the desktop environment or the DE. The DE shapes your daily interaction with the system, influencing aesthetics and functionality. For beginners, prioritize a user-friendly DE like GNOME or KDE Plasma or even XFCE if you like that old school type of style, each catered into different preferences. Like a talk, GNOME offers a more streamlined interface, which is the one I use at the moment. KDE Plasma provides an extensive customization and XFCE balances simplicity with functionality. Remember, it's not about finding the perfect diff row, but creating the ideal desktop environment for your needs. In Linux, you'll notice that the concept of installing .x files doesn't exist. And to be honest, it's quite a very outdated idea. What's commonly used are package managers, which we can describe as a method for installing apps and tools. And well, this process is extremely straightforward, much easier than dealing with .exe files or .exe. So let's do a quick task. Let's install Obsidian, which Obsidian is a very popular note-taking app. So let's try installing it. How will we go about it in something like Cinnamon, which is the desktop environment from Linux Mint. So we can just do software right here, software manager. And now we have it, let's search for Obsidian with Control F, seems like it is here. Uh, let's do install to see what it does. Uh, please take a look at the changes below. So these are, I think, additional software that needs to be installed. That is very good since, well, there are some package managers that don't show you this and just install it on the back end. So having it shown to you is very good. So that is a very good thing about this package manager specifically, which is Flatpak, which comes with Linux Mint. So very good to know. So let's wait for it to be fully installed. And yay, it appears to be installed. Let's say we don't want to open it from here. We'll do Alt F4 and we'll do Obsidian. And look at it, seems like we have it installed and we can simply use it. So that's very good. Say hello. Hello world, there we go. And if we want to uninstall, let's say that we're just going to use Notion rather than Obsidian. So we don't want it anymore in our system rather than jumping through hoops and doing crazy things to uninstall it. We can just do a simple remove, continue and all the additional software will be removed. And there we go, it is fully uninstalled. So as you were able to see, it's remarkably fast and requires just a few clicks, even during the uninstallation process. Like funny enough, 
it is easier to uninstall than install which that should be the case with windows which sometimes it may not be since it would like leave out things in the background and additional software that you were able to see that it required to be installed for obsidian to work however there are alternative methods for installing packages such as terminal based package managers like apt homebrew dnf and pacman these package managers require you to learn a few commands to install specific packages fortunately one of the most user-friendly options is apt which serves as the default terminal centric package manager for linux mint and ubuntu since they are based on debian with this recommended distros well from my part you will find it relatively easy to install packages and apps via the terminal it's worth noting that both ubuntu and linux mint offer a package manager with a user-friendly interface similar to what you saw in the previous demonstration when i was using flatpak which as you can see here it is back again and you can install slack zoom i saw skype but i don't think anybody uses skype <laughs> right now but yeah these interfaces are very good since they are able to introduce us properly to installing packages and applications via Linux. My recommendation here is to explore and become comfortable with these systems so that in the future, you can confidently use more advanced and robust package managers like DNF or Homebrew, which I love. The command line is what led me to switch from Windows to Linux. It's so easy user-friendly and fast that every time I saw somebody using it and I had to deal with the Windows terminal, I was honestly discouraged from doing certain tasks, not to mention the horrendous backslash paths. The best way to learn the command line is honestly by using websites like this, like Linux Journey and Linux Revival, which offer an interactive and generally fun way to learn the terminal. In my opinion, the one I used a lot was Linux Journey since it's very user-friendly as Linux Survival looks a little bit outdated, but it is still an extremely good source to learn the Linux terminal. So yeah, I will highly recommend both of these. In Linux, there are some excellent software alternatives to what is commonly used in Windows. Unfortunately, not everything is perfect at the moment especially in the video and photography industry, where the best programs are still primarily available on Windows and Mac OS, such as Sony Vegas and the entire Adobe Suite. Even though there are alternatives for applications like Microsoft Office, my preferred choice is only Office. Essentially, for any app you can't find on Linux, which are honestly quite few, but could be significantly valuable depending on your work. Simply perform a quick search for alternatives, try them out and see if they are a good fit for your needs. I highly recommend doing this within the virtual machine. This way you can determine if fully transitioning to Linux or using a dual boot setup is a suitable choice for your daily task and work. So that was it for the video. You guys can let me know what you think in the description and I'll see y'all in the next one. Please take care.